painting loosely can be mistaken for painting quickly and painting without care like getting lucky or just being so good that you can just throw paint around and magical things happen. For me, in my experience, it's actually kind of the opposite, that if I want to have the feeling of places where things came together effortlessly, it's usually an area where I've been slower and I've been a lot more careful to show restraint in not touching it once it is good enough. Perfectionism actually is a real problem when you are hoping to paint loosely because perfectionism is going to tell you that your marks are never correct enough, they're never good enough, they're never free enough, whatever it is, and so you're going to want to redo it and redo it and redo it. And there are times where redoing something is absolutely the right move. I think there's a lot of paintings, master paintings, where you'll see a beautiful brush stroke that just looks like it was just like dropped right on there just perfectly and effortlessly. There's a good possibility that that artist, whether on the painting that you're looking at or other ones, has scraped it out and tried it again several times over. So the confidence that comes with knowing how to lay down a mark comes from knowing your stuff. It comes from making sure that you know what is on your brush before you put it onto your canvas, what value it is, what the temperature is, so that it relates well with the colors that are gonna be around it, the shapes that are gonna be around it. So one of the ways to think about painting loosely is how can I say as much as possible with the least amount of effort? For example, when I'm making a pocket or something on the sleeve, can it just be a line? Can it just be an indication? And will my viewer's brain, because of the information around it, just fill in the blanks? And that really makes the composition much more interesting. If you don't spell everything out for your, for your viewer and you allow their mind to do some of the work, it will really keep them engaged longer. I'm being very careful in the areas with the lines. I'm using a very thin brush called a rigger, making sure that the paint is a thin enough consistency that it will make a nice clean line. And always, always I'm thinking about value. As I'm doing the fabric, I'm aware that if I don't hold my values well, that the whole effect of the sun and the light and the boldness of the composition isn't going to work. So even though I am doing a pretty tight job on these lines, I'm still thinking about areas where I can come through and I can soften it up. So there'll be some areas, especially in the shadows, where I will allow myself to lose some of the lines, to let things blur a little bit more. And coming off the edge of the fabric, I don't want everything to be a straight line. I want to make sure that there's areas that are smudged and where the paint is kind of pulled into the background. Okay, one of the practical things that you can do to loosen up is to paint from the end of your brush. This is something that I have to remind myself frequently because it's very, very easy to get pulled into your painting, choked up on your brush, and sometimes it's appropriate, and especially if you are paying attention and you know why you're doing what you're doing, then it can be okay. But if you find yourself gripping tightly and sneaking back up onto the top of that brush instead of the end of your handle, then it's something that you can do that will make a very quick change to the way that your brush strokes come off the canvas. Another benefit to painting at the end of your brush is that you can keep your body further away which also helps you read your work in a different way. If you're up close, for me and my experience, it really starts beating into my feelings of like needing things to be perfect. Whereas if I can set myself further from the canvas, I have more of a holistic view of what's going on and I can kind of sift through what is important and what's not important. So if there's a mark that I feel might be a little bit too out there, being a little further from my canvas, I might find that actually it adds interest and it's not distracting in a way that I don't want it to be, and I can leave it there. The movement of the brush is important. If you can learn to play with how you hold the brush and the angle and the release of the brush off the canvas, 
that's one of the ways that you'll be able to start really having looser brush strokes and more interesting calligraphy on your painting. Where we start working in the hair and the headband here, it's a good place to look at how layering can also help with the feeling of looseness and interest in your brush strokes. So really, instead of putting down individual strokes and noodling those and messing around with them and trying to just like think of the hair as individual pieces, I'm really trying to treat it like first a whole bigger shape and then break that shape up with the impression of hair going the other direction or catching the light differently. One of the key concepts that I have learned about painting loosely is understanding the difference between overworking your canvas and allowing the process of deconstruction and reconstruction to create some spontaneity in your work. So let me see if I can articulate the difference here. It's a little bit like if you lay a brush stroke down and you keep petting it, you keep moving your brush over it and over it and you don't really have a plan, but you're just kind of trying to will something to happen instead of putting something down and leaving it and letting it sit for a while and then coming back if you need to do something later. So a good example of construction and reconstruction as opposed to overworking an area on your canvas is here when I'm starting to do the lips. And I'm purposely laying down a bold and intense swatch of red here full well knowing that that is not what needs to happen as like a final product here. This isn't the final lips. But I'm thinking ahead because I do understand where the light meets the shadow on the lip, there's going to be a moment of really high chroma and I want to be able to have that feel a little bit more effortless. I don't want to paint it on later. So I'm going to allow that little part of it to, to stay and then the rest of it I'm going to pull out and I'm going to move around and introduce some more skin tone so that it really ends up being something that has a looseness to it that doesn't look overly intentional even though it was completely intentional. So really if I can summarize this for you, the practical things that I would say for painting more loosely are plan to paint loosely. Plan your areas where you're going to lose your edges. The best places for this I have noticed are going to be where you have two dark shapes next to each other that you can blend together. So instead of having very distinctive different shapes in your shadows, try blending those together and letting them fall into one bigger shape. Another thing that you can do, as we talked about, is being on the back end of your brush. So giving yourself a lot of space, painting from the end of your brush, standing back frequently. Varying how you apply the paint, meaning the thickness, the thinness, how you're actually releasing your brush from the canvas, uh, changing the directionality of your brush strokes so they're not all going the same way and the shapes of the brush that you're using can also help really loosen things up. Know why you're doing what you're doing. If you are just feeling like you're in a little bit of a spiral or you're feeling a little numb to the choices that you're making, you're probably gonna overwork your canvas. But if you can really think a little bit ahead and say, okay, what do I want the effect of this particular shape to be? Then you can think, is it just like a big bold swatch that I'm just gonna be really careful to mix my paint correctly, check it first, and then go for it? Or is this situation going to call for construction and reconstruction where I'm going to apply something that's kind of bold, but then I'm going to take some of it away, move some of it around, soften some edges, maybe add more things into it. So it's intentionality and moving with confidence on your canvas.